Hello and welcome to Dove Biology, Apes Lessons to Go. In this video, we'll be exploring Earth's internal structures and some of their major geologic processes. The Earth is made up of a core, a mantle, and a crust. And it's constantly changing as a result of the processes that are taking place on and below its surface. The core is the innermost zone, with a solid inner core, made mostly of nickel and silicon, and a molten outer core that is extremely hot and made out of mostly iron. The mantle is what makes up most of our lithosphere. It's going to be the rigid outer part of the solid rock, and then also a molten portion called the asthenosphere that's melted and pliable. And then, of course, uh, terra firma, what we actually stand on, is going to be our crust, the outermost zone in which all of uh, the continents sit upon. Now, in terms of the crust, we can classify it into two separate groups, continental crust and oceanic crust. Continental crust is much less dense than oce uh, oceanic crust, uh, made mostly of granite, whereas oceanic crust will be made mostly of basalt. Continental crust is much older, while oceanic crust is going to be younger because it's constantly being formed at uh, oceanic ridges. Continental crust typically is thicker, and our oceanic crust is much thinner in nature. The reason why our oceanic crust is younger is because ocean crust is continually being formed at mid-ocean ridges, and then it's being constantly destroyed where the oceanic crust meets the continental crusts. So at the mid-ocean ridges, there's going to be little fissures uh, in the earth, which allows for hot magma to spew up um, and form new oceanic crust. As the tectonic plates move, um, the oceanic crust will oftentimes encounter continental crust, and because it's more dense, it actually goes underneath or subducts under the continental crust, and it gets pushed down into the asthenosphere, which is hot and molten, and melts again. And so, oceanic crust is constantly being created and destroyed. Um, this is called seafloor spreading, uh, the formation of seafloor. So, uh, this uh, seafloor spreading is occurring at these uh, places where the Earth's plates are kind of broken. These earth plates are called tectonic plates. Tectonic plates are these massive, irregularly shaped slabs of solid rock that are typically com composed of both continental and oceanic lithosphere. The lithosphere is broken into plates because it's kind of brittle, and it's broken as a result of uh, pressure and convection that's happening underneath of uh, that, uh, that lithosphere. Just like our atmosphere, we see convection currents happening in the upper uh, mantle, in the asthenosphere. The hot magma rises and will bump into um, our uh, lithosphere, and then it will kind of help it to shift and move slightly. And then as it cools, it will fall back down uh, into uh, the lower portion of that asthenosphere. So this is going to cause collisions, rifts, and sliding boundaries between these tectonic plates. The extreme slow movement of these plates cause them to grind into one another at plate boundaries and form geologic features and cause geologic events. So where these plates are encountering one another, this is where we're going to find mountains forming, uh, ridges, and uh, valleys forming volcanoes, and earthquakes. In fact, most of our major volcanoes and earthquakes are going to occur along plate boundaries or edges. Uh, the greatest number of active volcanoes uh, in the Pacific follow what's called the Ring of Fire. Where the tectonic plates uh, interact with each other, it forms one of three major boundary features. The first type that we'll look at is called a transform fault or a slip fault. At these boundary types, uh, the two uh, plates are actually sliding next to each other. And as they slide, sometimes they release intense energy if they get kind of caught up on each other, resulting in earthquakes. 
Uh, one of the biggest uh, transform faults is found in California, and we know that as the San Andreas Fault. Our next uh, major uh, fault boundary is going to be called a convergent plate boundary. When you have a convergent plate boundary, the two plates actually smash into each other. Now, if it's two continental plates, um, because they're both less dense, when they smash into each other, they lift up, forming mountains. If we have uh, a oceanic plate and a continental plate smashing into each other, oftentimes the oceanic plate, because it's um, more dense, it's going to go under, it's going to subduct under that continental plate, and that's going to form trenches. And then finally, another thing that can form uh, when we have those convergent plate boundaries is volcanic mountain chains. Sometimes um, at these convergent boundaries, especially where we see continental and oceanic plates meeting, um, with the resulting earthquake, we can also have a subsequent tsunami. When the overriding plate along a subduction zone uh, is there's a little bit of friction and it kind of gets caught up as it's subducting when it suddenly breaks free it's going to move upward and that's going to raise the seafloor a little bit and then also raise the water and so we're displacing that water and a whole lot of energy and it's got to go somewhere and so that's going to form a tidal wave finally uh, we have our divergent plate boundaries this is where our two plate boundaries actually move apart from each other uh, this is where we have our mid-ocean ridges, which result in our seafloor expansion. Uh, we also have seen this um, in some continental plates, and particularly in Africa, in the Great Rift Valley. So as those plates pull apart, um, it's separating uh, continental uh, plates, and then as they're pulling apart in the oceans, it's creating those mid-ocean ridges as the magma pulls up from the bottom and then increases um, the seafloor expansion.